Okay, so let's start now. We're very happy to have the, the last talk by Anthony Freddy Canasas Garay, who will talk about interpolating Wilson loops in ABJM, boundary conditions in ADS2, and one deconformal symmetry. Take it away. Thank you. Uh, so this is the, the my talk. The as uh, this was the basic mainly of this this recent work. Uh, and so first, uh, let me show you the the flow of this talk. So uh, don't worry, this is not a, a randomization group flow. It's just the outline of the talk. So first. I'm going to to talk uh, about the uh, uh, some general holography facts and Wilson loops, and then I, I'm going to focus on the sorry on the interpolation family of, of Wilson loops, and in particular in in, in some uh, one parameter family of this Wilson loop, we are going to to see see the the motivation for considering the, the interpolating interpolating boundary conditions in this talk. And well, and finally, I'm going to, to uh, make some, some comments in, in relation to an, an expression that is uh, conformal invariant in, in one dimension. So, well, uh, I, as I think you, you know, we, we have uh, two, two main examples in ADS-CFT. The, in ADS-5, where we have uh, the tie to e theory in ADS-5, that is holographically dual to the n equals four super young mills in four dimensions. And we we have a, a dictionary between the, the parameters and the string theory, the string tension, the G string, and the parameters of the of the super young mills theory. Also, there is another uh, uh, another harder theory, a harder example, harder to understand, in type, uh, type to A uh, strings in ADS4, ADS4 times CP3, which is a, a complex projective space. And in this case, the CFT is an in equal six uh, Charles Simons mother theory, which uh, in three dimensions, and we, we call it ABJM. And so we can relate also the the parameter the, the gravity side and on the CFT side. So uh, also another thing is the this uh, GKPW prescription. The, we we state that the the partition functions are the same, and we take a, a appropriate uh, boundary condition so we can. Uh, this allow us to to get the the correlator by the correlators by taking uh, functional derivatives. Uh, this has been done in, mainly in the in, in in the in the leading order uh, leading order approximation, which is a, a classical supergravity approximation. So in in those cases, uh, we we can also so it is useful to to use in, instead of this uh, the partition function as generating function using this this generating function that would, I, I think we we all know from the QFT courses. So let's go to Wilson loop. So in in n equals four super young mills, we we have in, in general we have this this kind of expression. So we have this. Uh, uh, the, the the usual term of, of Wilson loops in in QCD or QED, for example, but we we add this interaction to the to the scalar fields of, of the the super young mills. And here we have um, also an an n vector. This is a, a unit vector in, in, in six. It has six. Uh, uh, Component because this vector is pointing in a in a sphere in a S five sphere. Uh, so in, in ABJM things are are harder, but we can also couple the the scalar fields of, of the theory, and we, we can have this this kind of of Wilson loops in, in ABJM. 
And regarding the holographic description, well, so we have the, the dictionary here is that we we take the the the, the back end expectation value of the of the Wilson loop. It's going to be equal to the, the string partition function, or or if you you want the, the string amplitude of, of the, the strings that have the boundary condition that are ending on, on this uh, circle of this flow. So we have this the circle in the boundary and we we have a, an integral or a sum over all the, the possible worksheets that are ending on, on this flow. And in the leading order uh, contribution, we we have this this uh, this minimal surface. For, for the the worship. and this this can be done in ADS five or ADS four. So let, let's see more more closer. Uh, this we have the the ADS space. This uh, this is going to be the the boundary in, in this this coordinate, and we are going to put the the circle or, or the loop. And uh, the minimal surface is going to be the this one. So this is the case of the circle, but uh, you can take, uh, for example, um, a square or another loop. And of course, this is not going to be ABS two anymore, but it's going to be another another minimal surface. And uh, just uh, if, if it can be uh, also the the infinite is a straight line. So. What what are the the motivation for for Wilson loops? So, well, there, there are uh, Wilson loops by by itself are are in, an interesting object, but uh, for me the 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 most interesting thing is that we can do precision tests of, of the of the correspondence. So, the, the the reason for this is that we have in in the CFT in general we have uh, it is a result in uh, using localization techniques. So, so this is going to allow us to to go beyond the living order. And also, we we can uh, look for for correction for higher genus correction or or the worksheet fluctuations, quantum corrections on on the worksheet. And regarding this, a uh, higher rank representation could capture this this higher genus corrections. So, so well, uh, now uh, with Wilson loops in arbitrary representations uh, can be defined, in, in particular in anti-symmetric representations. Uh, uh, there is a, an idea and a dictionary in, in in n equals four super young means that the anti-symmetric uh, representation is going to correspond to a, a d d five range in, in, instead of, of a, a fundamental string. And if you have a Wilson loop in symmetric representation, the, this is going to be uh, holographical. This is going to be this this described by the uh, d three brain. And in the ABJM, we we expect that this is going to be something similar. So we have the D6 brain or the D2 brain for the anti-symmetric bands and symmetric representations. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, so let's go uh, now to the interpolating Wilson loops. So here, this is the the family of, of uh, Wilson loops. So this is the this is the one parameter family that uh, interpolates between the fermionic uh, fermionic half BPS uh, Wilson loops and the uh, and the bosonic ones. So uh, this this can be for the, the 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 circle, which is also is half BPS. But but today we we are going to focus just in the infinite straight line. So we have the this as you can see the interpolating par parameter it's over here. This is a, a matrix the dependent on the, the parameter. So in, in this interpolation, uh, um, 
So people uh, realize that in the in the case of the half BPS, uh, you have to take the the string um, to take a direction boundary condition. In uh, well, so in, in the ADS four, is it's clear that you have to, to impose direction boundary condition, but in, in the in the CP three uh, for the half BPS, you have to impose. Uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions on on all the angles of the CP3, but in the one six BPS, uh, the thing is that you the, the this is going to be an uh, the string has to be the, the localized in in the in a CP1 in, inside the CP3. So so the proposal is that uh, we we take Neumann boundary condition for me, this uh, in the CP1. So we impose Dirichlet boundary condition in four four uh, directions in the CP3 and two Neumann boundary conditions in the remaining two angles. So th this is more or less that we are going to do now. So uh, here is the, the metric of the ADS4 CP3. We, we are going to, to use this. Uh, this is like an, a vibration so in this coordinate. So, and this is the, the CP3 metric with the, the six angles. And now we are going to put a, on a string over here. So we have the number of the string. And we, we get the induced metric. In, this and here uh, this is the, the important part here this will be almost the same as this expression but with, with derivatives instead of differentials so um, now the the classical strength solution is going to be uh, this one which uh, described the the infinite the uh, so the the boundary is the, the infinite straight line, but the the worksheet is going to be a ADS two, like like an infinite plane, it's like a a Poincaré Poincaré false plane. And so I I forgot to to comment that the, I, I'm I'm working all in all this in in the Euclidean time version. The theory. So actually, this is a. It's not a strict ADS two, but it's a hyperbolic plane. Uh, so this is going to be the, the induced metric evaluated in this this solution, the classical solution. This is the the metric and this uh, point for coordinates. So we have the that this solution. Uh, uh, this is satisfied that these two different boundary involving problems. Uh, in particular, this is the, the, the coordinates, the angles in the CP1 that we're interested. So we, we can impose Dirichlet and, and Neumann boundary. So now we are going to fluctuate the, the worksheet. Uh, we're going to see the, the fluctuations in, in this worksheet. So the, by doing this, the uh, we are going to obtain the fields in that are living in this ADS2. Uh, so at uh, the quadratic level, the fermionic spectrum can be worked out. But I I am I, I know the I'm going to show me any anything about the, the fermionic but the fermions, but yes I I'm, I'm going to show a schematical that the, for the bosonic part. We, we can span this uh, up to quadratic, up, up to quartic uh, fluctuations, and we can get the, the spectrum of this. <clears throat> Sorry, so for the spectrum, we, we, we just need the, the quadratic fluctuations, and we found that the. Uh, so in general, we have a transverse <clears throat> fluctuations. Uh, but this, uh, these scholars are going to be six are uh, massless, and we have two massive scholars. 
And for the fermions, we have uh, also a, a fermion, but, but we have six uh, massive fermions and two massless fermions. And this is an important observation. And just for comparison, I, I'm going to, sorry, uh, I'm going to, to see also the, the, the spectrum for the other case, for the ADS-5. In, in this case, we, we don't have uh, master sermons. So this is an, an important difference. Now, so I, I'm, I'm not going to, to show all the, the, the fluctuations of all this uh, eight scalar fields, but the, the, they, they should be dual to operators inserted at the ADS to boundary, which is uh, an infinite straight line. So the, this uh, so this leads to the to the notion of defect uh, CFT, and we we are focused on on a single single complex combination, the, the, the coordinates that I was talking about before, and we are going to. So we, we I, I'm just writing this uh, this contribution, neglecting the, the, the other coordinates. So th this is going to be the, the quadratic uh, fluctuation and the, the quartic uh, fluctuation. So you can see it's a, a massless color field uh, with this kind of interactions. Okay, so we are not we're going to the interpolating boundary conditions. So this is the uh, the work that has been done. We, we take this first uh, uh, before consider the the quartic interaction. Uh, I'm going to review the the case of the massless scalar field. So we the idea is that we make an asymptotic expansion near the the boundary. And uh, here we, we are going to use the the usual holographic prescription. Uh, the, the, the usual thing to do is that we we take this as the the Dirichlet boundary boundary condition by by taking this uh, this mode this uh, alpha as the source, but we we can also impose Neumann boundary conditions. In this. Uh, here we are we are taking this uh, this beta field as, as the source and of course the the action is, is not the same so we, we have to to add this uh, boundary boundary term mm -hmm. so now uh, we we did the the same but with this uh, quartic interaction that that came from the from the stream fluctuations so these are the the interpolating boundary condition the, that were proposed. So here is the the alpha delta field and the beta field is inside this uh, this eta. And um, and this J function is uh, we we found that we we can uh, choose two two functions. So it can be just a, a sine function. Uh, or it can be this this logarithm function, and we uh, Anthony we call it the, the can uh, I can I, yeah? can I can I make a question uh, yeah why, sure. why you don't have the the one that the uh, Aguilera Damia and company had the action in this case because they were starting oh, sorry <laughs> say again. Why you don't have a, a one in the action? Because I remember that in the action that you showed before, the one of uh, Jeremias, you had a one, right? You you were starting with a one. You one? Yeah. With a one, with the number one, in, in the Laranja, LB. You have oh, quartic, just... quartic terms, but you don't have a one in your action, in the one that you wrote S lambda. Uh, yes, uh, if I take the the the, the function of derivatives, that's not going to to make any contribution. I think. I I wanted to ask you about that because 
it seems to me that it's divergent, right? I mean, in the in the in the Jeremiah section, you have a divergent term there, right? Uh, because of the volume of IDs too. You see? I'm not quite sure because uh, I understand here, here, that you, you take the derivative and you <laughs> and you don't do you just don't consider the the constant that uh yeah but the, the, the yeah of course the, the constant term is going to the, the, the contribution of the, the constant term or where is it sorry uh it, it will be just the the, the volume of the ADS2. But we 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 don't want to to analyze that we, we want the, the quadratic fluctuations. And in, in this so you, the action is divergent in principle, right? Yes. Okay. But just for, for this uh, one term. So uh, with this uh, prescription of a boundary condition, we we studied the um, this uh, correlator, this uh, four point function, and also we verified that the Witten diagrams uh, are are working. Uh, in, in this case, also it's the was well, the same result. So uh, here I'm. I have the the correlators and the the two point function and the correlators for uh, the four point correlators and for the local uh, boundary conditions we we get this this function. And in this case, we uh, this is not a uh, this was not a uh, conformal covariance as was was expected, but for the uh, non non local uh, choice, uh, this this is a uh, this is covariance conformal covariance as you can see. So now this I'm going to talk about this uh, this sigma function that has to do with the the signs of the this differences. Mm -hmm. So let's recall the one dimensional conformal symmetry. We have the three, this is like a, a three dimensional group uh, translations, the scroll transformations, the special conformal transformations. And it's straightforward to see that the, this is the, the general transformations. And this is our particular cases of this. So um, if we then uh, take the the the, the determinant of, of this uh, this uh, this condition of, of on, on these uh, numbers, we're we're going to to get that this this group is the SL two R. So the conformal group is. Uh, it's isomorphic to SL2R up to topological saddle test. And another important quantity is the, the cross ratio, which is this, this quantity. And if we take the, the transformation, the conformal transformation over the tau of the coordinates, we, we get this. So uh, it's easy to see that the, this cross ratio is conformal invariant. And well, additionally, we have this this symmetry that is also symmetry of the, the cross ratio. Uh, so let's go back to the sigma function now. So the it's easy to see that this sigma is invariant under translations and the scale transformations. Uh, and we can also uh, perform an, uh, a special conformal transformation. And 
we, we can we can show that this this expression is is, is the same. So if sigma prime is uh, sigma prime equals sigma, so sigma is is conformal invariant also. So uh, these are the my final comments. So this sigma is conformal invariant, and the since u is invariant under this uh, this tau this one over tau transformation, and and however sigma is is not so. This means that we cannot get a sigma as as a function of the cross ratio. And so this means that just because something is conformal invariant, this doesn't mean that it can be written with the cross ratio. This is this is an example of. So also it's an, like an open question that I have that under what conditions can a conformal invariant function be, be written as a, as a function of the cross ratio. And so that's, that's the end of the talk. So thanks, thanks for listening. Okay, let's thank Anthony for the very nice talk.